Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I will set a bit of a challenge. Nvidia reached out and asked if I would make the best value gaming PC possible for under a thousand pounds or so using their RTX 2060, which is Nvidia's entry level ray tracing graphics card. And to see if I could hit 1080p 60 with high settings and ray tracing in games like Call of Duty, Metro, Control, and Battlefield 5. The good news is that while you can spend an absolute fortune on a gaming PC, and how much does this thing cost? In the current guys here, it's like 30,000 30, UK pounds. 30,000 pounds? Yeah. Okay, that was a little bit overkill, but you don't have to spend that kind of money. Actually, you'd be surprised how much performance you can get without having to sell a kidney, or at least not a whole one. But the best part is this all came in for about 900 pounds, which is about 11 or 1200 dollars. Now let's start with the graphics card because that is the most expensive component in this system. We all know the GPU has the biggest effect on gaming performance, so getting the best card you can afford is a good idea, but not at the expense of skimping on other components that may bottleneck it. And I think for this build with this budget, the RTX 2060 is a great choice. It's perfect for 1440p or high refresh 1080p gaming. It offers a decent step up in performance over the 16 series cards, and it's also the entry level RTX cards. I'm sure you've already seen a whole bunch of videos on ray tracing, but put simply, it's a more realistic way of rendering light and shadows in games. So far it's mainly been used in movies, but now with Nvidia's RTX cards, we're seeing ray tracing and other effects like DLSS being added to games. Sometimes the difference can be subtle, but it definitely adds to the overall realism and immersive factor. Now you do take a performance hit by enabling it, but with updated drivers and better optimized games, it's less severe than it was when it first launched. But I think in 2020 with games like Cyberpunk, uh, the new Watch Dogs Legion, Dying Light 2, and a whole bunch of other ones supporting ray tracing, as well as uh, some degree of support for it in the next gen consoles with the PS5 and Xbox Series X, I think going forward you will get use out of it. So I've actually got Nvidia's Founders Edition 2060 here, but I think the Gigabyte version of the card for around £300 is great value. So moving on from the GPU to the CPU, and as I was specking this build, there were two main processors that kind of like went head to head, which I was choosing between. They're both great options, both six cores, but I went with the Intel i5-9600K, mainly because of its slightly higher clock speeds over the Ryzen 3600, especially when overclocked, which means it's slightly faster in current games, which do tend to benefit from outright speed rather than more cores. And because this build is gaming focused, that's the chip I went with. However, if you're also thinking about using this for video editing, rendering, or more sort of uh, compute intensive tasks, then I would probably go with the Ryzen 3600 because you have more virtual cores and it is also around £30 or $50 cheaper and comes with a bundled cooler, the Wraith Stealth, which will save you a further £35 to £40. You can't really go wrong with either, performance will be quite similar, but if you are keen to overclock this and you do want the higher clock speeds, particularly for gaming, then I think the Intel maybe is the best bet. Now this i5 doesn't come with a bundled cooler though, so I've gone with the Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP, which is a great little cooler and good value too at around £35 or $45. Now for the motherboard, I've gone with the Gigabyte Z390UD, which comes in at around £100 or $120. But what makes it stand out is its overclocking potential. Unfortunately though, it doesn't have any USB-C ports or Wi-Fi support natively on the board. Now moving on to RAM, and I think 16 gigabytes is the sweet spot right now and probably will be for a couple more years. I've gone with Corsair's Vengeance RAM, which costs around £60 for twin 8 gig sticks, which tend to perform a little bit better than a single 16 gigabyte module. Storage comes in the form of an Intel 512 gigabyte 660p series M2 NVMe SSD, that's a bit of a mouthful, and it only costs £65 or £90 if you want a terabyte, which is great value. It's not the fastest NVMe on the market, but it's still a decent upgrade over a SATA 3 SSD. Plus it's smaller and more convenient as there's no cabling. As for the case itself, I'm using Corsair's IQ220T RGB, which is a bit of a tongue twister. And again, it's pretty good value at around £80 or $110. It's compact, versatile, has a built-in RGB controller hub, as well as good airflow thanks to the mesh front panel and three 120mm inlet fans. Downsides? Well, it's a bit basic and you don't get a rear exhaust fan, so I went with a couple of extra Corsair 120mm Pro RGB fans and linked them up to the RGB controller. 
Now, when it comes to power, I always use a modular PSU. And the best value one I've seen is the Seasonic M12-2 Evo 521. As far as choosing a PSU goes, just make sure you get a sensible wattage for your components with decent efficiency and from a known brand. And being fully modular means it's a cleaner looking build as I don't have to deal with cables I don't need. And 520 watts is easily enough here, even overclocked. Okay, so we've built the PC, but before we jump into games, let's just do a quick overclock. I went for a bit of a quick and dirty overclock, 4.7 GHz up from 4.3 by changing just one value in the BIOS. You could push it a little bit further to 4.8 or 4.9 if you want to spend more time tweaking it. And then for the 2060, I opened up MSI Afterburner, put in these numbers and got a nice little overclock. All right, so let's get into some games. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I averaged 69 FPS at 1080p with high settings and ray tracing, and dropping down to medium bumped it up to 84. It is quite a demanding game though, so I'd stick with medium if you're playing at 1440p. In Control, we saw a solid 74 FPS average at 1080p with ray tracing on high and 90 FPS on medium. RT does seem to have a big impact on performance though. You can easily hit triple digits without it. In Call of Duty, we're well over 100 FPS at 1080p, even with high settings. And actually, we don't drop below 60 even at 1440p. Turning on ray tracing does knock the frame rate down a decent amount, but we're still over 60 FPS even at 1440p. Next up, we've got Metro Exodus, which is a pretty demanding game, especially with the awesome looking ray tracing effects. Still, we don't dip below 60 FPS here, even with high settings and RT enabled at 1440p. The results at 1080p are a little disappointing though, I was expecting much higher frame rates given the reduced res. I'm still amazed just how good Battlefield 5 looks, and it also delivers great frame rates, with an impressive 120 FPS with high graphics at 1080p, and over 100 FPS with high quality ray tracing and DLSS. So I think for £900, this is actually a pretty impressive little PC, I'm really happy with this build. I think if I were to make some changes for next time though, Maybe just for the versatility, I would go with the Ryzen 3600 over the Intel, although, as I say, they sort of go neck and neck sometimes. And maybe I'd go with a 1TB SSD, just because once you install Call of Duty and a couple of other games, you really do start to fill that up quite quickly. And actually, it's not that much more expensive, so I would go with a 1TB SSD there. But aside from that, and maybe putting in an RGB strip somewhere, I love this little thing, and for the money, I think it's actually really, really good value. So a big thank you to Nvidia for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna build this for yourself, this exact PC, I've put all the uh, components and all the specs in the description below. So go and check that out. And also a link to uh, find out more about the 2060 if you wanna read up on it. Thank you so much for watching guys. And if you wanna see more PC build or PC hardware videos from me, then make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below and I'll know to make more of them. As I say, components in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Yeah.